With almost 200 hours in Starfield, I thought we'd start breaking down outposts, building and resource automation in depth in Starfield. Now in this video we're going to be covering specifically how to find the perfect planets for your outposts and where you should build on a planet in order to maximize the amount of resources harvestable, because it is possible to have several resources in a single outpost. We'll also be touching on how to set up your first outpost, the basics that you need for that. So with that in mind, let's scan some systems. Now, if you do feel that I am skipping any important steps, do make sure to check out my beginner's guide to outpost building. I'll put a link to that video in the description below, and it should cover any questions that you may have. Now obviously the first thing that you want to be aware of when it comes to building your outpost is your character level, as there's no point going to a level 50 system and then building an outpost if you're going to be attacked by aliens that will one shot you. As we're focusing on building an outpost to automate resources, it may even be more ideal to pick a lower system to ensure that you can fend off enemies with ease. And knowing that, you'll want to focus on finding a system which has ideally these following resources. The first one is iron, then we have aluminium, tungsten, beryllium, copper, titanium, as well as lead. Now, as you expand, you will need to find more resources, but these particular resources should help you quickly build up an outpost. It will also allow you to scale up your outpost building on other planets because it provides all the resources that you're going to need. You'll need iron and aluminium for a lot of buildings and also for producing items such as the adaptive frames. So these are definitely necessary straight off the bat. I also think tungsten is required because you're going to need it for your extractors or your, your solid resource extractors, I should say. We're not really touching on um, vapors or gases uh, extraction for this video. We're also going to need to power our outposts and as a rule of thumb the majority of planetary bodies will have sunlight available but not all have atmospheres so i prefer solar panels over wind turbines which is why i'd recommend beryllium and copper these are also used to build the basic scan booster as well as cargo links and landing pads which you're going to be using later on in the outpost and as we're planning on manufacturing resources as well, another resource to keep an eye out for would be titanium, as this is used for warehouse uni units further down the line, but we're not going to be talking about that today. So if you do have titanium near you, fantastic. If not, we'll, we'll get to that bridge when we come to it. Now with these resources in mind, you will have to think about defending your outposts from time to time. So with that, you're going to have to also consider getting another resource. I recommend lead as it's the only other resource you need in order to build a basic ballistic turret. Now you do not need to find a planet which has all of these resources on it. It's going to be very difficult to do that, but ideally you will find most of these resources on one or two planets within a single system. Now with our shopping list in hand, it's time to search some systems. I recommend investing skill points at this point in scanning as each rank allows you to scan more difficult resources. For example, rank three in scanning allows me to scan and see resources on the planetary view that have three diamonds on the top right hand corner of their name. For example, beryllium and tungsten, they only require one point in scanning and also titanium that requires two points. With those skill points designated to scanning, you'll be able to see them on the planetary view, so it is important. As you level up, you'll also want to consider putting points in outpost building, skills in botany for growing plants, zoology for husbandry, and outpost engineering for other buildables. And then we have planetary habitation, which will allow us to place outposts on more extreme planets, as well as placing more outposts. And finally, outpost management for optimizing our outposts. Now finding the perfect planet is far from easy, but once you've found one that you think will work in terms of finding all those resources, you'll want to scan the planet to see the resource allocation. This gives you a good idea of what resources surround a particular area, but it's important to be aware of that you do not need to land where there are resources on show as neighboring areas that are unmarked still have a good chance of sharing those resources that are shown in the marked area if they're in the same biome. But one thing to bear in mind is that you can have multiple biomes in a single landing spot. 
you can see the biome by clicking on a landing spot and a biome will have one or two resources within it. But the great thing is if you land close enough to a border of biomes, it's possible to find resources from all the bordering biomes. This is how you will find the perfect spot. Unfortunately, it does come down to trial and error, so you're going to have to land on the planet and search out quite a few spots until you find the perfect place. Now, when you do land on a planet, try to find some high ground and see whether you have other biomes within this spot. You can also hover the outpost beacon over the ground to tell you what resources are available without you having to search for each resource. And when it comes to picking a spot for your outpost, I look for a minimum of three to four resources before setting myself on a spot. What I'll do is if I find somewhere that has three resources, I'll place an outpost down and then I'll continue searching to see if I can find any more resources nearby that allow us to have four resources or more in that particular area. Now, once you've set on a spot, place the beacon down, and then scout out any other resources on other planets within the system that you need. And once you're happy with two or three outposts, it's time to start automating. Now for this video, I'll recommend setting up resource collectors and storage for them all. And I do recommend having your storage all close together so that you can grab easily any items that you're producing. Now if you do want greater control over the angles when you're placing buildings, make sure to go to your settings, across to control, and then reduce the outpost item rotation speed. And for more useful tips like that one, do check out my video on 12 advanced tips that you need to know for Starfield. I'll place it in the description and at the end cards for you. Now by now you should have your buildings set for production. You'll need to link the extractors to the storage by going to the outpost building overlay, then pressing tab to enter modify mode or whatever it is on console. And then next right click the extractor and drag the link shown as this red line here to your storage and press E whilst hovering over the storage unit. This will connect the two together, allowing you to store the resources. And I should also mention that you only want one item per storage unit. This is going to be super important for outpost production later on, which we'll cover in the next episode. Now, if you haven't done so already, make sure to add power and you're now ready to focus on automation. But guys, I hope you found this basic guide on setting up your first outpost and finding the perfect spot useful for automating your resources. Let me know what you'd like to see me talk about in the next Starfield video and make sure to subscribe for more. Special thanks does go to all of our amazing supporters on Patreon, most notably our solo clips patrons, James Owen, Fireflesh, and Treble, as well as our Lunas, The Calamity, Ben, Star, and That Dude AW, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Dr. Shotgun. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.